so there I was in the middle of the playground with uh, my, my, my little daughter. Um, Carolyn looks down and she's our bug finder. She's got, got this squat that she does when she finds a cool bug. She loves her some bugs. So she sees this bug and she goes into the squat. So I know she's got something good. And I walk up and she goes, Daddy, Daddy, we gotta get our sketchbooks. Look what I found. What does she have? She has this little guy, this big guy, this beautiful, whoa, there it goes. Look at that, look at that thing. Look at, whoa, oh, this, this, this critter. Oh, oh, oh hold on. <laughs> it's slippery. Um, this, <laughs> look, I hold it and it just pops up. Um, this beetle, this beautiful beetle. And, and, um, so we grab, oh, oh. <laughs> um, we grab mm, no real smell um, we grab our sketch books and we start um, checking it out and I'll show you the, the, the sketch that I did of it and there's something that's off about it and I think I figured out why and I'm going to try to fix that that live so I'm going to do kind of a little bit of, of painting first aid on the back of this this little beetle. Let's just turn this down to the sketchbook cam and I'll flip you around. There we are. So there's the beetle. And there is my my sketch of it. Now what I want you to notice is that um, the beetle is really super glossy. Really super glossy. And you can't, it looks more black on the screen, but there's a little, little, little some green, green, grass, and essence. Beautiful. beautiful. But this drawing doesn't look glossy, does it? I put some highlights in there thinking, okay, that's going to turn it glossy. It didn't. Um, and so why doesn't it look glossy and how can I fix that? So what's going to make something look shiny and, and glossy is, like it, <clears throat> is there's, there's no contrast here. There's no, I mean, look at how dark the darkest darks are on this. Compare that right up here, right? So um, I need to really boost the contrast, the difference between light and dark. So here is the amount of lightness on this. Here's the darkness on this. On this, the light is much lighter and the dark is much lighter. So this has brighter brights. So no, actually this dark, sorry, sorry, this highlight is darker and the shadow part is lighter. So the amount of contrast in this beetle is not as much as in the real thing. So what I'm gonna try to do is really boost the contrast on my drawing and see if I can make this hydrophilid look like this hydrophilid. They sort of, uh, this is a hydrophilid beetle. It's a really cool uh, water scavenger beetle. I'm gonna flip it over for a second. On its belly, whoa, you don't like that, do you? Um, there's a, this cool spine that comes down on the, the belly. I guess that's hard to see on the, the thrill cam um, here. But um, I made a little side view drawing of it. You can see that, that spine on the underside of the abdomen here. I just I put little circles in where the legs attach. There's this cool um, ventral spine like that. And I'm wondering if that kind of works like a keel. So I'm gonna to try to work with this drawing right here and to try to make it into something that will look more shiny. And so and so I first take the darks and and put them up, then I'm gonna I'm gonna take the lights them up and we'll see how well so so my palette over over here first grass gra some pay which is a blackish issue and I'm gonna get that rather dark and also for a dark value I'm gonna reach for over here in this area here um, right um, in here, this green is a, um, uh, what is that, uh, perylene green. And I am going to 
grab Paraline Green. I think I've got a bunch of Payne's Gray on my brush. I let a number of these things get a little bit dirty, except for my yellows. Gotta keep your yellow clean. Um, but there, I'm gonna get some Paraline Green. I'm bringing that over to this black mixing area. A little bit more. All right, so that's gonna be a really dark value. And now, big breath. And I am going to, oh, I need more liquid. I need more liquid in that for that paint to carry. All right, see, I'm just, I'm going, I'm going big dark. I'm going dark, 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 dark. And a little bit of dark, dark, the dark, darkity dark part want this to get really all the way to darkity dark dark. And now I'm taking my little rag here, wiping some of that paint off, paint off to have a damp brush and I'm gonna kiss this edge of it, but get that edge a little bit. Kiss this here, right up in here. darker. And now I'll get more paraline green. And I'm going to make this part of this darkity dark part really dark. I'm going to go all the way to the kind of dark that's really dark. Right? Not that kind of dark that's really a light value. This will be the dark kind of dark. And so there's some darkity dark, dark. That's dark. Ah. Bing. And maybe a little bit of the dark kind of dark. A little strip right in there. Uh, can we get more light on that guy? All right. Oof. Sometimes you know it's it's scary to go all the way like that. Getting some indathrone blue, which is also a very darkity dark kind of a dark. Mix some of that in. Squeeze my brush. Squeeze this thing. My 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 water brush. I'm gonna get some um, bloodstone genuine is kind of a brown and this is going to have some of those colors that are going to be peeking through oh. well that's dark that's dark now um, let's bring back my buddy. Um, right, we dark. We went dark. And now what I want to do is the flip side of that is to go light. To really go light. And if I do that on top of, I'm going to be upside down for just a minute it's because I've got these new anti-gravity boots that allow me to stick to the ceiling. And, and so even though all 
space is, is flipped over here with these anti-gravity boots, I can stick to the ceiling like this, which is pretty cool because I've got a hair dryer over here. I'm about to put some gouache on my drawing. And if I do that while the paper is still wet, although I'll be putting white gouache, uh, yeah, there we go. I'll be putting white gouache onto my drawing. It's, it's not going to work because the um, white, the wet, dark underneath it will go soak right up into the white gouache, making my um, kind of a, a, just sort of a dull, medium tone, grayish mess. So if I'm going to be putting white gouache on, I really need this journal to be dry. The dry kind of dry. The kind of dry that's, you know, not very wet. So that kind of dry. So I'm touching with my hand. Oh, not quite dry enough. Oh, they're almost dry. Yeah, there we go. That's the dry kind of dry. Um, that's how you want it. So you want it. These, these, these anti-gravity boots work really well. Ah. Now, back to the sketch cam here. Oh, I can see little bits of color, greens and things kind of bouncing back in, in at me. I like that. Uh, does that show up on the... Let's see if that, if I zoom in on this. No, it looks... It just looks darkly dark. But you do see I, I did push the value. I wasn't joking about that. Um, but there's actually a little bit of color variation in this in the when you see it live. So now what I'm going to do is get some gouache going on this. And I want some bright, clean, clear areas of gouache. This is um, permanent white gouache. And I'm mixing it into kind of a wanted, I don't want it to be liquidy. I want it to be a fairly thick paste so that it won't be transparent. And now I'm going to turn the beetle around this way and let me see what I get. All right. I see there is Actually, I actually want a little bit of blue in that. That's scary. It's really scary to go take this bright white and just drop it right on top of my drawing. Um, Now, what am I seeing here? Now I'm going to get a little bit of this I'm hoping that this little patch down here, as it dries, it's going to get a little bit more pale. And I'm expecting the same thing to happen here. And I'm expecting the same thing to happen here. The gouache, when you first put it on, it appears much whiter than it will dry. And gouache you can also kind of re-wet and it lifts and 
reliquifies. So some of these harsh edges here, if I hit that with a damp brush, they soften. And I'm going to get a little bit of, oh, whoa. Do you see what, like there's something going on. Watch that, watch that little hydrophilid there. So I'm going to get a little bit of a bit of light is reflecting in there. Not very bright. And is close to where I want it. Okay, last little moment here. I am gonna get a little bit of white gouache on the tip. And let's see, I want that. No, I want that to be smoother. Need a smoother consistency of gouache. Because what with those leg stretches like that? thing I'm going to do is take, is take a green wash and bring it into this central area here. It's going to be pretty pale, but I want it to show up just a little bit. Gouache is opaque, so I can put it on top of that darker surface. If I did that with regular watercolor, it wouldn't work. But gouache, you can put down on a uh, on a darker surface and it will still show up. A few final details. There are some tiny little um, rows of dots on the back of this body. And I'm going to get those with a colored pencil. I'm first going to give it one more dry. Here we are. I might edit these parts of the video out, but you know, it's so much fun to watch paint dry. It would almost be a metaphor. We're having a really good time. There you are. See, I put those dots on. Um, so if the light's coming like that, then on those dots, there 
there's going to be little on this side of the pit there's some light reflecting so by dots I put some little reflections I'm putting a bit of white pencil over the top of some of these dots so that it kind of kicks them back a little bit. Makes them a little bit less apparent. Maybe I don't want them to be that bold. Um, another row of dots, maybe. And along this edge here we're here we're picking up a little bit of white gloss there. Alright. That seems Seems better. Got a little bit of a wider edge there. A few highlights. And I some more of that green in there. This, these highlight, these little dot marks in here feel a little bit too intense for me. I want to have them there a little bit, so I'm just going to take some water and put a little bit of wash blending over them so that they stick out just a, you can still see them a little bit but maybe they're not quite as apparent and I think I like this better I think I like this a lot better um, sometimes what you can also do is take a blue colored pencil and I'm looking for where there's kind of blue reflected light so highlights, it's not just going to be white, you're reflecting refl off and high, high. So I can put a little bit of sky color in some of the parts. I want to be careful not to go too wild with it, or it kind of becomes this statement, I'm being crazy, cra my blue pen. And I'm not trying to make, trying to make a statement about Beetle right now. But I like that better. So it kind of now has more of the feeling of this. There's this very kind of dark, glossy thing with a little bit of green color to it. That feels, it's because I kind of popped up the contrast. If you compare how this looked at the start with how it looks now, that's a big difference, isn't it? pen crisp up some of those edges it's the voice of Ann Caudle art instructor at Cal State Monterey Bay it used to be UC Santa Cruz who is one of my mentors and teachers of coming up to my hand. I always hear her. So I think just kind of come in there, just crisp up some of those edges, just, just right in there. And there we go. Plenty crisp enough. Um, this is a hydrophilid.
um, wonderful water scavenger beetle. And um, we'll kind of get down a little bit closer so you can see the hydrophilid on the hydrophilid. It's a wonderful, wonderful animal. Zoom in on the real thing for you just for a moment. There it is. So these things that look at like antennae that are sticking out here, that's not an antennae. Oh no. The antennae are, are really weird things. I've got a drawing of one of the antennae here and they tuck in and around the eye. That little thing is a palp of some sort. You've got these cool little antenna, these reddish brown antenna that tuck right around the eye. And I got my close focus binoculars on it. You can kind of get in there and see it. Well, there it is, folks. Um, the water scavenger beetle, or the hydrophilid. Um, don't you love that name for a beetle that loves to live in the water? Hydro, water, philid, love, the lover of water. This beetle is the lover of water. Don't you just want to go snuggle? It's a gorgeous little animal. All right, I hope that, that was, was useful to you. Um, it's scary sometimes to pump up the contrast on your drawing, right? In the mode I'm using my journal because I think this beetle is really neat and I want to play with the beetle and so that gives you permission to go play with beetles so now what's gonna happen is my daughters and I we're all um, we're gonna hop on our bicycles and we're gonna pedal on down to the creek and we're gonna we're gonna say um, a little blessing for our beetle friend and then let it go into the water and uh, I'm gonna teach you uh, a little a, a, a fun little rhyme that I learned from Kelly Nelson of the Cal then of the California uh, Academy of Sciences um, and when we would be out with with youth and we would let a critter go um, this is this is what she would say and so I've whoop, let's see where can I there we are so um, this is what what she would say and it gives you uh, it's a it's a great thing to add into your 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 family's routine so if you've spent time with a critter and you want to thank it um, before it um, letting it go we say um, and you can do this as a, as a repeat after me so you can say the first part and then your kids say it or at some point they're all going to sort of know it to, to uh, together and so I'm going to teach it to you and she would say you, you can you can say this along with me. She said, "Run away, fly away, crawl away, hop. You're free to go. I'm not going to stop. You from living your life, you deserve to be free. Thank you for spending this time with me. And then you can let your little critter go. So, little hydrophilid gets to swim another day." And I will see you around. Keep those sketchbooks busy. Bye-bye, my friends.